Hey everyone, as I'm sure the majority of you who watch my channel are aware, I'm a really big Halloween fan. And something that hasn't really happened is a Halloween video game. We do have Dead by Daylight, but in my opinion, it doesn't really capture the, the spirit of Halloween like Friday the 13th does for its franchise. I think it would just be fun to discuss what a new Halloween game could be like and share my thoughts on what it could have in it. You know, that kind of just, that, that kind of thing. The idea I have for the game comes from a YouTuber called Dave McRae. I've just expanded on the idea. Um, if you haven't seen it, essentially the gist of it is you play as Michael in 1978. You've escaped and essentially you are free to do what you want. If you want to play it out like it does in the movie, you can. The choices you make influence how the night plays out. If you were to, for example, if you were to skip stealing your weapons and mask, you, could have a, you would have a hard time killing people throughout the night. If you decide to go on a murder spree later on, it would make prepping for the night extremely difficult since the city would be on high alert. I really love this idea and I love all the possibilities it could go into. The, the possibilities, are, there's just so many things that could happen and you imagine all the different endings and things that could happen from something like this. It would really like encourage replayability and like so much you could do with it. So now let me take uh, that idea and expand on it a bit with my ideas. Of course, you wouldn't want playing the shape to feel like Grand Theft Auto, so of course there would have to be in-game mechanics to make you feel like Myers. And Myers is not Jason, so he most certainly should not be a pure brute within the game. The biggest thing Myers is known for is being a patient watcher. Waiting for the night, uh, <laughs> waiting for the night, I mean kinda yeah. <laughs> waiting for the right moment to strike, which leads to two ways to really play as the boogeyman. The first would be to simply rush in and start killing people. And the other would be to patiently watch and learn where people go throughout their day and learn where they'll be later on. Of course, it would be hard to keep track of all the information you are given from the survivors, so when Myers learns a new piece of information, say where a survivor will be later on, say, Lori babysitting the Doyles. It will, uh, it'll be marked on your map and it will tell you what time she'll be there. If you continue to stalk that person, you will learn more and more as to where they will be throughout the day, and it will increase something I've decided to call bloodlust. Similar to how it functions in Dead by Daylight, but it will have a few extra added benefits. The more Myers watches his prey, the more his desire to hunt grows. When you initiate chase with the victim you've been stalking, your breaking speed, like with doors and such, will increase movement speed will increase, and ability cooldown, we'll get to that later, will also increase. This highly encourages players to play more like Myers from the 1978 movie. This will definitely uh, be different for each Meyer, like their passive, like let's say 2018, that will play differently from how 1978 would. Another thing that will increase Meyer's stats incredibly is acquiring the iconic William Shatner mask, which encourages players to get the mask early on. When playing as this shape, the players have the choice of playing first person or third person. Since Meyer's environmental awareness seems incredibly supernatural, of course, <laughs> I feel giving him a third person view is more than justified. But if you want to be first person, kind of similar to how some of the shots in the movies are, like the opening. You won't play through the opening, though. The, the game will start. Maybe there'll be, like, a quick cinematic, you know, but I want, like, when gameplay starts, it'll be you getting out of Smith Grove Sanitarium. I believe that's what it's called. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. I need to rewatch it. And when I mean a while, I guess I do mean just Halloween. But anyways, anyways. The shape will never have a run option, however, he will have a faster walking speed the more he stalks, but will never go to ridiculous speeds. There will be a speed cap just to ensure immersion and the challenge of the game don't break. The first ability will, uh, Myers will have is similar to Jason's shifting in the Friday the 13th video game, except way less, way less fast to make it more precise with where the player wants to go and make it less of a chase tool and more of a way to get around Haddonfield. But it can be used to, like, put yourself in a position to surprise survivors and catch them off guard. The, I mostly decide to make the shifting not a chase tool, just so it encourages players to set up and hide and ambush 
people. I, I really want to encourage that rather than, at least for 1978. Of course, other Myers will play differently. Like if, uh, like say for a DLC down the road, uh, Rob Zombie campaign or whatever were added. Rob, Zo Rob Zombie's Michael Myers would have the ability to run eventually. And of course, he would be much more aggressive. And I, in 2018, to a lesser degree, will also be less, uh, less sneaky, more aggressive. But Halloween 2 would also be more sneaky. And I'm sure you kind of get where I'm going with this. Uh, to quickly mention, this is the single player mode. This is the, the, just a single player. I have an idea for a multiplayer mode, but I won't discuss it in this video to avoid it being an hour long. Anyways, the more Myers increases his evil, which can be increased from stalking, acquiring the William Shatner mask, injuring, killing, injuring or killing the people of Haddonfield, and setting up bodies or other things such as like the teeth, or even like how he made the, the police officer a human jack-o'-lantern in... Uh, 2018 stuff like that will increase evil the more evil that builds the stronger his abilities become and in case and in the case of shifting he will eventually gather the ability to vanish whether a survivor is looking at him or not just like in the movie of course other Myers is such as 2018 might not uh, get the ability to shift whether they're looking or not. Like, like in the case of Oscar, he had to wait for the uh, um, spoilers for 2018. Uh, when the lights go off, that's when he was able to shift. Like, you know, teleport. You, you, you catch my drift. So certain Myerses will. Uh, that sounds so weird. Myerses will be able to shift whether they're looking. They'll have different upgrade abilities not necessarily an upgrade tree it's directly connected to his evil it will uh tell the player on their first time playing or if they want to keep the tips and hints on they can um what like once they upgrade their evil it'll say oh now this happens now even if like uh, annie's looking at you from the street you can vanish whether she's looking or not myers doesn't care anymore he does what he wants And of course, uh, the more evil you get, you'll also get access to other abilities. Myers starts off having to drive to get around Haddonfield, but with increase in evil, he'll be able to teleport anywhere within the Haddonfield. He also has the ability to blend in with his environment without being noticed by survivors. Of course, people will notice Myers in broad daylight right in front of him no matter what. Sometimes, uh, unless maybe there's like... A very specific, maybe there could be a blind character, I don't know. But they might want to remain unnoticed so that, oh wait, my bad. Sometimes the player will want to do this to put more fear into the hearts, into their hearts, <laughs> excuse me, and increase evil. But they might want to remain unnoticed to gather more information, which makes this ability really useful. Once it is in use, Meyer's presence is far more difficult for survivors to notice as long as he isn't right in front of them. Even in broad daylight, the more that is increased, the more he can move, move around, like, you know, he can walk and kind of stalk his prey a bit more. And, uh, yeah, get, get closer without being noticed. If characters are paranoid of the shape, it will be much more difficult to sneak up on them. But a Myers with lots of evil makes it much more likely that even a paranoid survivor aren't going to notice the shape sneaking up on him with this ability. The ability also comes in handy when you've got an area all set up for a survivor and you need to blend into the environment and wait for the moment to pounce. The shape will also have an ability called Killing Intent. Once much more of his evil was gathered, similar to Tier 3 in Dead by Daylight, Myers is done playing with his victim and wants him or her dead. He begins to do the classic Norman Bates Psycho Strike at the earliest tier of this ability, which makes increases, which massively increases the damage his knife strikes perform. Once his evil is increased even further, the shape can perform crippling damage, which prevents a survivor from doing certain actions. For example, if they get stabbed in the arm, they won't be able to pick up certain objects to attack the shape with. Like, maybe they could pick up a light knife or something but like a baseball bat or 
you know, certain heavier objects, like maybe even like they might have a gun, but with the gun being like, you know, kind of heavy, if you stab them in the knife first, and if they're like a teenager, they're not exactly going to have the strength to pick up the gun after being stabbed in the arm. That kind of thing. Crippling wounds can also be done from stealth attacks, in which the shape can choose exactly what he wants to cripple before he goes in for the chase. Later versions of Killing Intent can also choose uh, what he wants to cripple, but the earliest version cannot. Stealth, uh, stealth pounces, or whatever you, uh, you'd like to call them, they can always choose what part you want to cripple. The next level of Killing Intent will give him the ability to kill a survivor in a nice cinematic fashion once he's built up some fear. The 1978 insta-kills will not be as brutal as the 2018 ones, but have a nice cinematic quickness kind of feel to them. Some of them, of course, uh, similar to Friday the 13th, you'll have a wheel to select from. Some of them will be a bit more slow, kind of similar to the way he kills Bobby. Some of them will be nice and quick like a quick throat slit or something like that, similar to how he does it in the 1978 movie. And then with the final level of killing intent, we'll allow the shape to instantly kill one victim and then instantly cripple a nearby victim. For instance, let's say you have this particular ability ready when you find Annie and Bobby doing their thing, but they happen to see you, so you activate the ability to ensure one of them won't get away and inform law enforcement and increase the paranoia within the town, and you don't want law enforcement ruining your prep time. So you pop the ability and everything goes into slow motion, and the options as to who you want to die and how. Similar to the Friday the 13th Will of Options, once you grab a survivor, like, you know, you can choose how you want to kill and which survivor you want to kill. And then, once you choose which survivor you want to kill and how you want to do it, you then select where you want to cripple the second survivor. Uh, let's say you choose to do a quick stabbing on Annie, and then you choose to cripple Bobby's leg. The cinematic begins, the shape em uh, quickly emerges from the shadows, knowing his cover is blown. He grabs Annie's throat, holding her down, he pulls up his knife, and stabs her. Bobby, stricken with fear, fumbles out of the bed and tries to get away, but being stricken with fear, he trips. The shape capitalizes on this and quickly removes his knife from Annie and stabs Bobby's leg. Of course, the cinematic would play differently depending on what appendage you decide to go for. Let's say you do, you notice that there's like a gun nearby or something, or like maybe even a knife. So maybe you don't want him to hurry and go for the knife, so you like stab his hand. Uh, uh, like distract him a little bit and might not uh, immediately notice the knife or you just don't want him lifting something heavier like a bat or a bigger gun or whatever um, and then you go for the arm instead it kind of make it, it rewards a uh, Myers aware that, that that is aware of his surroundings right like a Myers that instantly goes for the leg, you might think that the leg it would be the best every time, but maybe there's actually a weapon really nearby, and the shape's mobility is very low, so he can get stunned. And if that, uh, if he gets stunned by a weapon, uh, Bobby might have enough time to get away and call the authorities. So you have to be it, it encourages to be strategic with the shape. You know, I, I think that that'd be something that that would really make this game like stand out. Anyways. That the, the cinematic's done, he stabbed Bobby's leg. The chase commences, but now the shape has a huge advantage with Bobby going much slower with a limp in his step. Those are the four abilities I thought of for uh, 1978 shape. Maybe there would be like DLC ones later down the line, or maybe there would just be more in general that you could choose from, but those are kind of the four I have initially thought of right now. If the player chooses to be an aggressive shape and not stock, he or she can but will not gather as much evil or bloodlust as you would for stalking. So like each kill would technically get you a lot more than like, like it gets you more bloodlust and stalk quickly, but um, there's not as many people and like you, you know, you alert people and stuff like that. So and of course stalking helps out with chases a lot. 
uh, the first if you decide to be aggressive from the get-go and just start killing people it's gonna be really difficult because once you start you're gonna be slower you're going to your abilities aren't going to be as great so you probably want to get some prep time in of course an experienced Myers won't need as much which is why it encourages replayability because you already know what uh, maybe you know what certain survivors like to do what they're good at what they're not good at maybe you know a specific survivor uh, isn't really good uh, at handling being ambushed or something like that like like Bobby here he tripped he fell Maybe uh, after, you know, after you replay the game, you know which survivors you can really be aggressive with and which ones you might want to stock. Of course, Lori's going to be the hardest survivor to go up against, other than, like, Dr. Loomis. But Dr. Loomis cannot be killed for the 1978 campaign. He can't. Um, which I think is the only character that I'm going to make, at least in my head, that you won't be able to kill for the, um... Uh at least in this campaign <clears throat> all right so let's talk a bit more about blood list it also increases the longer a chase goes on for so like the the shape will get faster break things everything that i mentioned before just so if you want to play the shape aggressively at least the 1978 one it isn't impossible but it definitely isn't the way the game wants you to play as him of course bloodlust will work differently with each shape because each shape will have different stats so some will get different benefits maybe a shape that's initially poor in uh shifting and stuff suddenly gets better at that with uh, the more he stalks or like the longer chase goes on if the survivor happens to stop looking you can teleport and surprise them somewhere up front or something each shape will play differently and have different advantages and disadvantages just so every time like maybe a new dlc campaign gets added it's nice it's fresh it's fun and of course i want each one to kind of have a different objective just to make it feel really well, unique there's, I, I can't think of a horror game that's really kind of been like this. But, yeah. Using stealth allows you to instantly cripple people with surprise attacks, as I mentioned from before. Uh, if bloodlust is high enough, though, uh, from stalking that specific person, you can instantly kill them from the shadows. With the exception, <laughs> with the exception of Laurie Strode and Dr. Loomis, of course. Lori Strode can be killed in 1978, but it's not easy. You can't instantly kill her uh, from the shadows. You can never instantly kill Lori Strode. But you can kill her in 1978, just not, like, right off the bat. Since, you know, she should be the big final girl. She, that, that's what she is, man. She's Lori Strode. Can't just instantly kill Lori Strode. Speaking of Loomis, though... He is always on your tail, and the more you do, the more he will be aware of your position, which encourages unpredictability and to remain hidden in daylight to the mass public and choose your actions carefully. If too many people spot the shape stalking them or others, if they happen to find a body that will alert the police, which means not only does Loomis have info, but now the police are giving you more attention. Cop murder makes you a much higher target, but if you hide the bodies and they aren't found, this will decrease the amount of attention you'll get, but you have to choose your targets wisely, which is where stalking comes into play. Is someone expecting the person you're after later tonight? It might not be a good idea to kill them yet. It might be better to kill them when they are with that person to ensure the person expecting, let's say, his girlfriend won't get caught and ask for police which could start a search party. If you happen to get caught by Loomis, you cannot shift or teleport away if he is looking at you no matter how much e evil you have. And if he happens to down you, you have one chance to get away. If he catches you again, Myers will be sent away and a 2018 campaign will begin. To avoid frustration, Loomis isn't terribly active at first until the player goes on, uh, until a uh, player either goes on a high kill count early on or during the night, he'll become more and more active. If you save Lori uh, for the end and initiate the chase how it happens in the movie, you'll get a special cinematic that plays like the movie, and once you fall and vanish away, two things will happen. 
If you avoid the police and go to the Elrod house without being caught, a Halloween 2 campaign will begin. If you get caught, a 2018 campaign will begin. I won't go super in depth with both campaigns, but I will briefly explain my idea for both. The Halloween 2 campaign will be the shortest of the three campaigns since the majority of the movie is essentially one chase. Think of it as Halloween meets Metal Gear. Myers has to systematically get through the hospital using the shadows and environment to his advantage to make his way to the Strode. To make his way to Lori Strode. Except like the rest of the game, there are many ways for it to end. If you play it, uh, if you play it correctly, you can potentially kill Loomis in only this campaign. He can't be killed in the 1978 campaign, like I mentioned earlier. And Lori Strode, who can also be killed in the 1978 campaign. The 1978 campaign, quickly summed up, is essentially similar to the video game Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. They have a set amount of time to prepare for Halloween night. Halloween night will not end, but there will be plenty of time in the day for the shape to stalk, gather, or whatever he wants to do. This highly encourages replayability because if you know what one person is going to do at certain times, you can turn your attention on an endless amount of different characters to interact with. I mean, of course that's expression, but there should be a lot of different characters to learn about, so it's not just the same Annie, Bobby, Lori, Tommy Doyle, in which you can't kill kids either, because, it, I don't know, it seems a little... I know, I know we killed a kid in 2018, but, I don't know, it just feels not right to me. <laughs> Maybe uh, in the cinematic you can still kill the kid, but uh, I definitely don't want, um, I don't know, I, I just, I can't see it in my opinion, in my, in my view set. Once a player knows everyone's patterns and where they will be, the player can prep more efficiently and play more aggressively, making Halloween night a nightmare for Loomis and police. The Halloween 2018 campaign will be similar to the 1978 one. But Myers starts with much more bloodlust, but you know, that happens when you're like trapped up and gooped up for 40 years. Um, and he gets much more evil after getting his mask. This encourages players to be much more aggressive with this Myers, just like in the movie. This Myers gets much more evil from killing uh, the people of Haddonfield, but stalking still provides useful information on the map and still provides useful speed and evil, just not quite as much. I mean, the information will still relatively be the same, but. He'll start off with a bit more speed, um, but like he can still gain a little bit more speed from stalking and that that sort of thing. He but he he just can't like get quite as many benefits out of stalking as the 1978 one can. He also gathers e evil for stealing Judas Tombstone. This applies to 1978 as well. Once a player unlocks a campaign, the player does not need to play through 1978 all over again. They can simply play the campaign they'd like. Playing through the 1978 campaign does slightly change the 2018 one. If you happen to kill a lot of people, the police will be on a much higher alert, but the player will have much more evil and bloodlust to compensate. If Lori is killed in 1978, it will result in a special ending and a 2018 or H2 campaign will be impossible. Uh, unless you just replay the game, of course. But if Annie is, but like, for example though, if Annie is never killed, she could be seen in the 2018 campaign. And of course, the, the Haddonfields change to reflect how they look in their special movie or whatever. So 2018 will look like 2018's Haddonfield. Of course, not drastic changes because that would be really crazy, but like, you know, just add a few landmarks here and there, like um, the new Elrod's house and, you know, stuff like that, stuff like that. The 2018 campaign always ends with a showdown with Laurie Strode and Michael Myers. If she dies, the game ends. If it plays out like the movie, Halloween Kills begins. Which could maybe either be a DLC, or if they were to release the game around that time, it'd be a neat game to, like, you know, t tie in with the game. It could be really cool. I think it'd be super fun. Now, I know the, uh, the, the licenses with Halloween are really messy and would make all the Halloween movie campaigns really difficult. But for the release of the game, I think it, all it would really need is the first movie and 2018. Halloween 2 would be nice. It would be really nice and it would, like have that 
I think it'd be, like, like I mentioned with the ending, like, you know, getting caught or going to Elrods would be really cool. Just, like, you know, because you either go to or 22, I don't know. It's just something that I think would be really neat and adds a little bit of variety. But I think all you really, really need to start off is one in 2018. Just so, like, it ties in with the new movies. People, like, you know, the, it, like, helps the new movies. And also, like, people recognize uh, the new Michael Myers and stuff like that. And they're like, oh, cool, it might coordinate with, like, the new movie or whatever. It, w- it would help the game out a lot. So I think those two are the only two you really need. But uh, over time, it would like, you know, once the game releases, they have more time to get licenses like one at a time. And then maybe they could make like an H4 or something like that. That'd be really cool. Um, But it would give them more time, like I mentioned, to get licenses and they could just do it one at a time. And then like for a sequel, they have all the licenses and they could do something different with it or whatever. Anyways, uh, and of course, all the Myerses would play differently for the multiplayer as well. If you guys would like me to like express how more of like these campaigns, like if you'd like me to like discuss like a H4 campaign and my thoughts and like how that Michael would behave and what the goal of that should be, we, we can talk about that. Oh, I guess the child murder thing would be a little tricky for H4, wouldn't it? <laughs> and I guess H5 and H6. I don't know. We, I, I'd figure it out. I would figure it out. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it was really fun doing uh, this 2018, uh, 1978 one. I think, and I guess uh, to a certain extent, 2018 and H2. It was really fun, like thinking of all the ways Myers could play and stuff. Uh, of course, more abilities would have to be done, or they would act differently with each uh, Myers you play. And all of them, I would want to feel unique. So more abilities, the better. The different passive traits, whatever. Uh, like you know 2018 being more aggressive and rewarding that kind of play style he would be like more efficient with using his hands uh as weapons in 1978 michael wouldn't be quite as like efficient with his hands but he'd be great with a knife um not to say like the other ones wouldn't of course um but 1978 would be much better in stealth and would gain additional speed like uh, he'd be a little faster uh through stalking and stuff like that but initially he's not quite as fast uh, i also have idea for um survivor campaigns for Lori and loomis so it could be fun to talk about those if you guys are interested as well but of course only if you guys uh like to hear it uh let me know what you guys think let me know your ideas what do you think would be really fun to add for like a halloween game like this um i i really think it's fun to discuss this because i've really wanted a halloween game forever now I, I've really wanted one ever since, uh, I think, really since I played Dead by Daylight, I was like, wow, this is really cool, but, like, I want I want a more something that feels like Michael. Like, you know, Jason got his Friday the 13th, and it feels a lot, like, it does his movie franchise really a uh, good amount of justice. Like, so what you want about the game itself, the game reeks with how, like, Friday the 13th atmosphere it's it's amazing the amount of detail they put into that game um but yeah I would like this a similar kind of treatment done for Halloween I really think it deserves it and I would just I'd love it I would eat that up but yeah it's really fun talking about it thank you all uh for watching I know this was a, a lot longer than my usual videos I just had a lot of ideas and I still have more ideas and I'm I'm keeping that away for now just to prevent this from being hours hours and hours but uh yeah i just wanted to express my thoughts on a halloween game thank you all for watching i'll see you in the next one take care